listening, please, to the Gospel of Matthew. And we're in the Gospel of Matthew this morning, chapter 11. The Matthew, Matthew's Gospel, please. And we're in chapter 11. And we're coming all the way down, please, to verse number 25. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 11. And we're coming down to verse number 25, please. At that time Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son. And he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. And come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Amen. And we know that the Lord will add His blessing to the reading of His own precious truth for His name's sake. Amen. One thing we have to understand, child of God, and it's this, and I think we forget this important truth as Christians, and it's this this morning. There is more to the Christian life than just having a profession of faith. That's something I believe we need to understand today. There is more to the Christian life than just having a profession of faith. It goes further than just having a profession of faith. I know this morning every one of us in this tabernacle, it's our desire to be in heaven with Christ as far as eternity is concerned, who in this tabernacle this morning wouldn't want to be in heaven with Christ as far as eternity is concerned. You know, let's just remind ourselves today that life for all of us will come to an end. We don't know when, and we don't know how, and neither do we know where. Life will come to an end. Death will come. But there's two facts we have to face up to this morning if we want to be in heaven. The first fact is this, we have to face up to that we were born into this world as sinners. And you have to take this place this morning where you know you're lost. And friend, you have to come to this place and acknowledge this morning that you're a lost sinner doesn't matter how good you are or how righteous you are or how religious you are, you have to come to this place and know that you're a lost sinner. You know, every person that's in heaven this morning stood in that very place. Maybe you have a father this morning in heaven He had to stand in this place. 
Maybe you have a mother in heaven this morning. Ah, but there was a time she had to stand in this place. And you have to stand in the place where you face that fact this morning that you're a lost sinner. You'll never be in heaven unless you face that fact. Secondly, you have to go a stage further. The stage further is this this morning. You have to believe that when Jesus died on the cross, He died there for you. He died for your sins. He died for you personally. He shed His blood for you. And you must accept this fact this morning. Neither is there salvation in any other. There's none other name under heaven given amongst men whereby we must be saved. You can't save yourself, love. You can't save yourself, man. Christ died to save you. And every person in heaven faced that fact as well. But you know this morning there is more in the Christian life and to the Christian life than just having a profession of faith. Many people have a profession of faith, but never saved. Mind you, Judas Iscariot had a profession of faith. He still died and went to hell. You remember Simon the sorcerer in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8. Man, it, he had a profession of faith. I and was baptized to. Baptized by immersion, but he was never saved. And I, I, I'm scared for many people. Because I believe that's all what people has today is a, is a profession of faith. But there's more to the Christian life than having this morning a profession of faith. Every person desires Christ as far as salvation is concerned. But the Lord Jesus in His personal ministry takes us further than salvation. There is service, you know. It's not all about coming to Him and trusting Him. It's all about serving Him. You see, genuine conversion this morning always manifests itself two different ways. Genuine conversion always manifests itself in two different ways. Those two ways are, first of all, obedience. Obedience and works. Do you remember the Lord Jesus when He was speaking in John's Gospel, chapter 14, verse 21? He that hath my commandments and doeth them, he that is that loveth me. Genuine conversion, child of God, is manifested by obedience. That's how you know a person's really saved when they obey the Word of God. It stands out, you know. And then there's, there's works. James 3 and verse 20 says, Faith without works is, is dead. Do you know what the Lord Jesus is saying this morning? Verse 28. Verse 28, it's about claiming Christ as Savior. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, he says, and I give you rest. Boys, many a man's preached the gospel and that, claiming Christ as Savior. But verse 39 is crowning Christ as Lord. Have you crowned Christ as Lord? Oh, you've claimed him as Savior, but have you crowned him as Lord this morning? You know, this is my text this morning, and it's verse 29. 
the Lord just didn't stop with verse 28. He went on, and this is what he said. Now, listen carefully to what it says. He says, Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. You know the Royal British Legion's motto is a good motto. Do you know what the motto of the Royal British Legion is? Service, not self. Service, not self. Do you know why there are so many unsatisfied Christians today who are unsatisfied with their Christian life? It's because they live for self rather than the Savior. There are so many unhappy Christians today who are unsatisfied. Oh, they have stood on verse 28, all right, but we need to stand this morning on verse 29. The reason as to why there are so many unsatisfied Christians today it's because we haven't crowned Christ as Lord. Look at verse 29 this morning. The first thing Christ wants us to see, God wants us all to see this morning, first of all, now look at it carefully. You've got the command of Christ. Now, what's the command of Christ? Now, listen to what it says. Take my yoke upon you. I want you to notice what the Lord Jesus didn't say. The Lord Jesus didn't say, allow me to put my yoke upon you. The Lord Jesus didn't say, allow somebody else to place my yoke upon you. No, no, he says, take my yoke upon you. This is a choice that you and I have to make ourselves. And this is the command of Christ in verse 29. Take my yoke upon you. I want you to notice, first of all, this morning, it's a, it's a decisive yoke. A yoke this morning, his yoke is something that we must be submissive to. It's a commandment of submission this morning. Take my yoke upon you. And that's a choice we have to make. That's a decision we must take this morning, to take the Lord Jesus' yoke upon us. He uses the word yoke because it's a great instrument. It's a great illustration. A yoke is used for leading. A yoke is used for guiding. A yoke is used for controlling. And you know, child of God this morning, the problem is we don't like the yoke. Because we like going our own way. We like doing our own thing. That's why there are so many unhappy Christians today, because we fail to be submissive to Christ. Oh, I remember the first time we put a collar on our chain. That's our wee miniature Yorkie. Boys, he went clean mad. Didn't like this thing around his neck at all, and he spent the whole day rubbing his neck along the floor to get it off. Didn't like it. 
didn't like it around him. It was a big change to him. It's just like us men when we get married. It's a different life altogether. I remember when I first got married, you know, it was a different way of life. I had notions of going out to cut the grass, but Tracy had different notions and notions I had to submit to. But you see, child of God, this morning, this is the stickler for us all. It's taking upon us the yoke of Christ. Tell me, have you done it? I loved Saul of Tarsus. Do you remember Saul of Tarsus? When Saul of Tarsus was wonderfully and gloriously saved, boys, right away, he was looking for the Lord to take the yoke upon him. You know what he prayed? Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? I wonder, have you ever prayed that prayer? Lord, what would thou have me to do? It's not what I want to do, Lord, but what would you have me to do? That was Saul taking the yoke upon him. Do you remember the day when the Lord Jesus challenged the fishermen on the Galilean lake? Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. He was saying to those fishermen, take my yoke upon you. Let me control you. And right away they put on his yoke. Do you remember Jonah? When the Lord Jesus challenged him to put on the yoke to go to Nineveh, he took to his heels and run, didn't he? And things went badly wrong in his life because he did so. You see, child of God, when we forsake the decision to take the yoke of Christ, we suffer for it. I want you to notice it's a divine yoke because it's the Lord's yoke. What's the Lord saying to us this morning? Listen, take my will upon you. Take my rule upon you. Take my lordship over you. Take my control over to you. And the Lord is saying, listen, listen, submit to my will. Submit to my lordship. Submit to my control. And it's a design joke. It says upon you. The Lord will never ask you to put a yoke on that won't fit. The Lord Jesus has a yoke that perfectly fits you this morning. I wonder this morning, have you ever prayed that prayer lately? Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? Are you serving him? Listen, you don't have to be a pastor to serve him. You serve the Lord wherever you are this morning. You make him Lord of your life. I want to tell you something else about the yoke. It's always a double yoke. And the other person in the yoke that labors with you is the Lord Jesus. Too many Christians today are quicker getting themselves unequally yoked. Unequally yoked with the world rather than getting themselves equally yoked with Christ this morning. Now listen. Do you hear this morning the command of Christ? Look at the compelling of Christ, because it says this, He compels, learn of me. Learn of me. The Lord Jesus is not saying in this text this morning, learn as much as you can about me. You can learn as much about Christ and still go nowhere. Friend, it's all about learning him. When Paul was writing to the church at Ephesus, he was writing to believers who, had, who, had, who had, were still living the old way. They were still carrying on living the, uh, as the old man. They had very little growth, but he exposed the problem. Do you know what the problem was? Ephesians 4, verse 20. But ye have not so learned Christ. I believe that this is where Christians are struggling today. We haven't learned Christ. 
Learning Christ as being alone with Christ. Learning Christ as just being in his presence. Learning Christ intimately. The greatest qualification that any Christian can achieve this morning is the qualification of knowing Christ, knowing his mind, knowing his will, knowing his word, knowing his person. Knowing, learning Christ this morning means developing a Christ-like mind. Knowing Christ is developing a, a, a Christ-like life. To learn mean, to learn of me means to follow my example. To learn of me means following my path of humility, of obedience, of honesty. Learn of me. Paul said in Philippians 2 and 5, Let this mind be in you which was in Christ Jesus. Charles Finney, the great revivalist, said, A state of mind that sees God in everything is, is evidence in growth and grace. You learning Christ this morning. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. Learn of me. There's too many today And they're learning this, and they're learning that, and they're learning the other thing. And they spend half their time learning Greek and Hebrew and all this theology. And half it's only codology. A student of God, as Spurgeon says, needs to know Christ before he knows anything else. Take my yoke upon you, that's the command of Christ. Learn of me, child of God. That's the, that's the compelling of Christ. But look at the character of Christ in the text. He says, for I am meek and lowly in heart. I'm telling you, you'll not find anything hard about the Savior. There's nothing harsh about Christ. I remember my unsaved years. Boys, I'll tell you, I knew what a slave driver the devil was. The Lord Jesus is not like the devil this morning. And the, I'll tell you, the Lord Jesus is not the way Pharaoh treated his people while they were in slavery. No, no, the Lord Jesus says, I am meek and lowly of heart. Do you know his very nature commands us this morning for us to allow him to be Lord totally over our lives? His character this morning commands us to take upon us his yoke. Let him control us. Let him be Lord completely over our lives. Take my yoke upon you. You know, Christ is no slave driver, child of God. Shortly after I was saved, I prayed that prayer, Lord, what will thou have me to do? I knew the Lord. I knew the Lord Jesus didn't save me just for the sake of saving me. I knew that the Lord Jesus had a purpose for my life. Have you asked the Lord Jesus what the purpose is for your life? For mind you, I had no intention of being a preacher. I certainly had no intention in being a pastor. I was happy enough working in for Derek Loans, and my wee, sir, my wee service for the Lord was servicing cars and slipping gospel tracks under windscreen visors. There was me and there was Mark Beatty. And we were Norman Marshall, and three of us were seated at the same mission. That's how we served the Lord, you know. We used to serve us cars and slipping tracks everywhere, making Christ known. I wonder when was the last time you have made Christ known? 
Christ won't ask you to put on a yoke that he won't be with you in. When the Lord asked me to put on the yoke, and well, I had the yoke on, but he opened it up and allowed me and called me into this work that I am, and I can tell you now it frightened the life out of me. This was a new sphere of service. But there's one thing I learned. The Lord Jesus is not behind me. The Lord Jesus is not in front of me. Do you know what I have learned? The Lord Jesus is beside me because we labor together with him. Now listen, child of God, this morning. What about this command? Have you obeyed it? Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. For I am meek and lowly of heart. For those of you who serve an impact, you have the yoke upon you. For those of you who serve as youth club leaders, you have the yoke upon you. For those of you who take Jonathan, who takes the Bible class, he has the yoke upon him. Those who teach Sunday school, those who play our music, those who take our senior citizens, those who serve in the ladies' committee, those who serve in the diaconate, those who are in elders, those who come in to clean this tabernacle. We are all laborers together with him. I want you to notice finally in this text, I think this is lovely. And ye shall find rest unto your souls. I want you to underline what it doesn't say, as a lot of other translations says it. It says, ye shall find rest unto your souls, not for your souls. An old Puritan translator put it like this. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. For I am meek and lowly of heart, and ye shall find satisfaction unto your souls. That's how you are satisfied in soul. When you allow the Lord to completely take control of your life. The Lord says to us this morning, take my yoke upon you. Do you know what he's asking you and I to do? To totally submit, surrender our lives to him. That's what he's doing. And the question is, as I finish this morning, are you in harness with Christ? When the Lord calls me home, it's my longing and it's my desire, whether it's at the rapture or whether it's through death, I want to be in harness if the Lord comes or calls. The Reverend George Dixon, who was the Presbyterian minister in Ochnerclough Presbyterian Church, always said that. He, says, I, he said, I'm not quitting at 65. I'm going on until the Lord calls me. One evening, it was a Thursday evening, he was taking his Bible class. And the thought of his Bible class was this, the Lord won't call his servants home until their last ounce of work is finished. That night after that meeting, the Reverend Dixon decided not to go home. He went out to visit Charlie Robinson, out to visit Charlie and minister to him. 
As he left the home, he staggered up the hallway. They thought he was only fooling about because that's, he was a character. Suddenly, he collapsed and went into the presence of the Lord. He died in harness. That's the way I want to go. Is that the way you want to go? In harness with Christ. Listen to his voice. If you want to be satisfied in your Christian life, listen to this. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. For I am meek and lowly of heart, and ye shall find rest, satisfaction unto your soul. There's no happier life for the Christian than a life that's totally surrendered to him. Service, not self. May God bless his word to our hearts.